Hey guys, um, it's midnight. I sh <laughs> should be in bed, but I can't go quite yet. I think I want to make this video right now. You know, often I'll get a comment from that is left by someone saying, wow, what you just said in that video was exactly what I needed to hear it. Uh, you just don't know how important those words were or how much those words were timely or how much they touched me or whatever. And here's the thing. Sometimes you guys leave these messages that are exactly what I need to hear in that moment that is the encouragement that I need or you know, maybe some doubts are going through my mind or anxiety is building, you know, or fear, you know, I, I, I have my battles and even though things have gotten a lot better, I still have issues at times, you know, and, and so sometimes you guys minister back to me, maybe even more than, than I minister to you, um, I just had a comment that I I read because uh, up late, uh, probably because I drank too much coffee too late, because <laughs> I do that, but I hadn't gone to bed yet, and I thought, well, I'm going to check the comments and uh, before I go to bed and just make sure, you know, because I like to read them all and respond to them and and at least put a a heart on them so that you know I've seen them and, and that I appreciate, you know, everything that you guys say. And there was a, me uh, a comment that was there, a, quite a lengthy one, and from a, a gal named Kathy. And so, Kathy, I believe you're going to be, that you're watching this video, and you know that it's you. And um, Kathy, she sounds like my kind of people. <laughs> She even said what, you know, what her uh, prayerful desire is for my channel. And everything that she listed there is exactly what, what, I, what I desire for it to be. Um, I want to make a difference for Jesus. I really do. If my life does nothing else, it doesn't matter. But if I can have an impact on other people for him then everything I've been through life, it's all worth it. Even the really horrible, ugly, dark, awful stuff that I used to resent, <laughs> but I've learned to embrace those things, to appreciate them, because those are things that, that God has used, you know, what I went through to help somebody else. Because you can't really have empathy for somebody if you've not if you've not been in that position before, and you can't really give somebody hope, you know, and tell them, oh, it's all going to be okay, or you know, it's it, it, it'll all work out or something. If you've not gone through it, but when you know somebody's gone through something that you're now going through, and they got through it and came out on the other side even better than they were before and well then those that's somebody I'm going to listen to you know how did you get through it you know what did what did God do um, because that's where I get the hope because I know that person's already been there they've already been where I'm at right now and so that's where we can embrace the the ugly things that we've had to go through in life is we've gone through something ahead of somebody else and then when we meet them and they're going through that we can give them hope and we can say, hey, look, I am a mess. <laughs> I have struggled with th that same thing or, you know, or whatever it is, or I've been through that same thing. We need people that, that understand. So that's why I tell my stories. It's also healing for me. I, I learned years ago, um, when I was getting help for all the abuse I'd been through, I used to avoid ever talking about it and, you know, and, and having been groomed since a, a very little girl, you know, you don't tell because 
deep down, you know, you've been told it's your fault. These things, or at least that was my story. I was told that it was my fault by more than one person that was abusing me. They would tell me that, you know, it's because I was a bad person. That's why these things were happening. And if I just be good, then they wouldn't happen to me. But, but that's not true. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not your fault when somebody abused you. They're the one with the problem. They don't want to, as one of my abusers used to say, is I will not, I cannot be the bad guy. Therefore, you're going to take <laughs> the blame. Oh, but that's okay. Because no matter how much somebody tries to manipulate something in life, God's still bigger and he still has the last word. And God has been having the last word. So, okay. Another cool thing with Kathy was she invited my dad and I to come when we get all get to heaven and we meet each other to come have coffee and a chat with her. And I thought that was really cool. Because I do look forward to seeing people that I do know that have gone before me. I, I have a lot of family, a lot of very precious people to me that have already gone home. That's what happens when you start getting old. <laughs> yeah. So I look forward to being reunited with them. But I also look forward to being reunited with the ones that I didn't know in person here. Because we're all this, this big family in Christ. If you're in Christ, then you are a part of the family of God. And we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And I think it's going to be amazing. And what's really going to be amazing is because at the heart of our family reunion will be the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ will be there. The one who made it all possible. The one who took our place, who paid the price that we should have paid. You know, he didn't commit my sins. I did. He shouldn't have been beat for my sins. I should have been. He shouldn't have been killed for my sins. I should have been. But yet he willingly took it all on himself and he did it for the whole world. That's a lot of sin to bear. But I know and I believe very strongly that if I had been the only one, or if you had been the only one, he would have gone through it all just for the one. But he did it for all because all need him. Not everyone is going to recognize that. Not everyone acknowledges him. Not everyone commits their life to him. And that's the heartbreak. But for those that find him, it changes everything. It doesn't mean life gets really easy and really good. In fact, sometimes it can get even more difficult in some ways for some people. But the thing I know is when I go through something, I don't ever go through it alone. He's always with me. He goes through it with me. And I can get through it because of that. When I get to that point where I've done everything I can do and there's nothing more I can do for myself, it doesn't mean that now hope is all, you know, all gone and this is as good as it gets. No, it means it's going to get even better because Jesus does for me what I can't do for myself. So I look forward to the reunion and I just, I just wanted to tell Kathy, thank you for your words. Thank you very much. And, um, I'm going to hear, uh, probably one of the next videos coming up. I want to tell the story about when my mom went home to be with the Lord. I told you about my dad and, you know, and the beauty of all that. Well, there's a beautiful story with my mom. I was so blessed to have very godly parents. I mean, they would sit and argue <laughs> if they were here. Oh, no, because, you know, it, we all know what our shortcomings are. We all know the sins we've committed and the struggles that we have. We know that whether other people know those, those things. And a lot of, you know, we've all got a, probably a closet of shame 
I often say that has things in it that we really don't want anybody to know about. So we all, we all fall, fall short of the glory of God. And so they would sit and argue that. But I will tell you that I knew my parents weren't perfect. But they were, I couldn't have asked for better parents. I couldn't have asked for more godly parents. It's like, you know, with my husband. You know, I think he's the greatest, <laughs> greatest man there is. He's not perfect. But he is a good man. He is a godly man. And I couldn't ask for a better husband. So we all come with our short our shortcomings and we all yeah and I I guess that's part of too why God was telling us look you've all sinned I've had to forgive you for things so when somebody does wrong to you you know it's no worse than the wrong you've done to me I forgave you now you forgive them so forgiveness isn't an option loving each other isn't an option and even when we find those struggles in being able to forgive someone or to love someone, some people are a little more challenging to love. <laughs> and some are just so easy to love. Um, but, but when we hit those challenges, he kind of fits, you know, will fill in the, the uh, empty spaces. And again, I know he can do for me what I can't do for myself. And and so when I struggle in forgiving someone, sometimes I just have to say, Lord, I know this isn't an option, but I'm really having a struggle with it. So I need you to take over here. And I need you to um, forgive that person through me you know, so that I can forgive them because on my own, I'm really having a struggle. And I've had some struggles. Trust me, I've had some people in my life that I thought I would never be able to forgive. And that was scary because forgiveness isn't an option. And he says that if we don't forgive them, he won't forgive us. And I do not want to be not forgiven by him. And so um, I've had those but yet, he's always honored that prayer when I've asked him to, to do through me what I'm not able to do. And he comes in and he changes my heart. And, and I'm amazed because not only does forgiveness come for that, that person who wronged me so bad that I think I could never forgive them, but a deep love and a deep concern and care for them um, I once had somebody that wronged me really bad and really bad. And I was struggling with forgiveness. And I had to go to the Lord because I it, it's like I was failing. And God did his thing in my heart. And shortly after that, you know, and I knew I just I felt such a burden lifted. And that's really the thing. When we forgive, we're the ones that that benefit from that. And unforgiveness in our hearts weigh, wear us down, weigh us down. And so shortly after that, you know, and I just felt so much love for them. Well, something happened and they were in a uh, very bad way and they needed help and they needed somebody to rescue them. They needed somebody to make some things okay for them. And God opened the door for me to be the person who was there. And they were like, why, why, are you, why are you doing this? Because I just began to do what needed to be done to help them. Um, it was kind of a medical emergency type thing. And, you know, and there I was. And you know what? Here, let, let me help you. And they're like, why are you doing that? After everything I did to you, I would think you would just walk away from me. No, I love you. And I forgive you. And Why? Because God didn't walk away from me. So I'm not going to walk away from you. And that, that really just sealed the deal. Because then that person had a change of heart. And, and it all came together in what it needed to be. And, and I know that it blessed God's heart to see 
two of his kids that were at odds with each other now loving each other and treating each other with the respect and the honor that he wanted us to forgiving each other. So anyway, I know, you know, I don't know when you'll see this, but, but it's, it's late when I'm doing it, but I just, I just kind of wanted to put this up there because that, 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 uh, comment that, that Kathy left just really, it just touched me that much. I wanted to do it. So I may throw this up as, as an, a bonus video for the day because it's not really a story or anything. I just wanted to touch base with you guys and, and tell you that for everything that Kathy, you know, that that touched me tonight when I needed it to, that's already happened so many times before. Um, there are so many of you guys and I, I'm not going to be able to remember everybody I, because it's getting to that point now. It's more than I can keep track of, but um, so many of you have said things that have just really touched me and been what I needed to hear in the moment. So I just want to tell you guys, thank you for ministering to me. It's, it's an odd thing doing, doing these videos in a way, but there is interaction. There is conversation that goes two ways in, in its own way. And so this is a tool that, that is there for us right now. And as long as we can use it, well, praise the Lord. May he get glory through it. All right. I love you guys. You have an awesome night. I'm going to say that because I'm going to go to bed because I need to get some sleep. But I will talk to you later. I love you.